Loaded show ahead here on Ravens Rundown. We're talking about a potential trade for Jonathan Allen of the Washington Commanders. Also, Damian Pierce of the Houston Texans. Could he be on his way to Baltimore as well? We'll explain more coming up here in just a matter of moments. Tyler Jones here with you. Thanks for stopping by here on the channel. Before we go any further, I want to know, Flock, who is your favorite Ravens player of all time? Dating back to when this franchise started in 96, if you had to choose one, who would it be? No wrong answers here. Just want to survey the chat of who your favorite Ravens player is. Let me know. Spam in the comment section, and we'll get started with today's show. Jonathan Allen, could he be on his way to the Baltimore Ravens? The folks at Ebony Bird, the Ravens fan-sighted site, have speculated that the Ravens could potentially look at moving on from one of their picks in next year's draft to be able to bring in Jonathan Allen to the Baltimore Ravens as a potential reinforcement, if you will, for the defensive line. Here's more from what Ebony Bird is talking about. Allen, who is sick of losing in Washington, could be all in on winning with the Ravens. Allen is not going to change the face of the Baltimore defense, but everything about his profile suggests he is at the tail end of his prime and can still be a high-end two-way tackle next to Matt Abike for two or three more seasons. Now, think about this. Truth of the matter of this situation for the Baltimore Ravens, when you look at Pierce and Urban, who were played alongside Matt Abike on that defensive line, both of them have shown minimal pass rush upside, right? The Ravens can do better next to Matt Abike than what they have right now. Now, with that said, you look at Jonathan Allen, this could certainly change things if he were a part of the equation. I think he would be a natural fit for what the Baltimore Ravens are looking to do of getting after the quarterback. It feels like when you look at that Ravens defensive line, as good as the Ravens defense has been the last couple of seasons, specifically last year, Matt has been like a one-man band, if you will. He's been like a a journalist that has to shoot the video and edit it and do everything it's himself, right? Or the, the, the guy that is trying to play drums and sing and play a little guitar and, and, and everything. I mean, he has to do it all on the defensive line, Matabike has. Jonathan Allen would be a huge relief and make Matabike's life a whole lot easier if you add him in to the equation here. Sure, the numbers last year weren't as good as what they were the previous two seasons, but he still wasn't bad. Five and a half sacks, 10 tackles for loss in 2023. The year prior, seven and a half sacks, 16 tackles for loss. And in 2021, nine sacks and 10 tackles for loss. And you look at this group here, okay? You add in Jonathan Allen here to the equation, and all of a sudden, I mean, this defense, I think, which is already a very good defense, goes to a whole nother level here. I think what you're going to start to see more of, if things hold serve as true, in 2024 is more double teams on Matt Abike. The teams aren't necessarily going to be afraid of Broderick Washington and Michael Pierce that much, right? Uh, and Urban, a part of that equation as well. I think that Matt Abike is going to be in a position where he's going to have a target on his back, if you will, uh, going into this upcoming season uh, with as good of a year he had previously. If you add Allen in there, you can't really do that. So what would it take to bring in a player like Jonathan Allen to Baltimore? Here's the trade idea I'm throwing out there. And keep in mind, the Ravens are going to get some comp picks uh, with losing the guys they lost this past free agency period. They have some extra draft capital to work with, with Patrick Queen gone and Geno Stone, among others here. I think you give up a fourth and a fifth round pick and Jonathan Allen can be all yours. Sign me up. I'll take that all day. Jonathan Allen, get out of Landover and get over here to Baltimore. You're going to love life a lot more. I can promise you that much. Should the Baltimore Ravens trade for Jonathan Allen? What do you guys think? It's our pin comment today. Why for yes, in for no? I like the idea. What do you think? Chime in in the comment section below. Today's show is sponsored by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the place to go for daily fantasy made easy. Here's how it works. Choose two or more players on any given category. Get the choice of more or less, whether you're talking fantasy points, maybe it's birdies and golf. Got the PGA Championship coming up this weekend. I love the PGA Championship. Been a couple times. Uh, we also have uh, NBA playoff action going on. 
The MLB season, of course, is underway. I'm looking ahead to the start of the NFL season. Lamar Jackson is going to have a Lamarvelous year in 2024. I got him having over 3,600.5 passing yards. Also going with DK Metcalf, my guy up in Seattle, to have more than 1,025.5 receiving yards. If I put $20 down, both these hit, that turns into $60 on price picks. Play along with me, pricepicks.com slash SaleLS, promo code SaleLS for a $100 deposit match on your first deposit. The link is in the comments and description of today's video. Download price picks today. You'll be glad you did. All right, let's talk about Damian Pierce now, the Houston Texans running back. Had a very solid rookie season, and then last year was a bit of a letdown as he ended up getting beat out uh, by Devin Singletary to be the Texans' top running back and saw his touches greatly reduced in year number two. And Bobby Slowick, who's gotten a lot of love as one of the top young offensive minds in football, kind of phased Pierce out of that offense. And with bringing in Joe Mixon from Cincinnati, that leaves the Texans kind of pushing Pierce to the wayside a bit, the, the odd man out, if you will. Last word on sports has named Baltimore as a top trade destination for the Texans back. Listen to this. Damon Paris is a homeless man's version of Derrick Henry. Ouch. And the Ravens could trade for the backup running back. Well, Henry is considerably more effective. Both players possess a physical, hard-nosed style of play that pairs well with Lamar Jackson's elusive running in the open field. With Henry getting older, Pierce can be an ideal backup in the event age or injury affects Henry in year one. I get the comparison to Derrick Henry. That is accurate. The, the homeless man's version, if you will. Okay, I get that. But as far as the Ravens running back situation goes, this is a bit of a head scratcher here. To me, I'm sitting here saying to myself, wait, of all the things the Ravens could address, we just mentioned the defensive line. We've talked a lot on this channel over the last few weeks about finding receiver help and all that. I don't see the need of why we're talking about adding another running back with what the Ravens already have here. We'll go over the depth chart here in just a second. I'll say this. I get it. A trade wouldn't be that expensive for Damian Pierce. I think you're looking at maybe giving up a seventh-round pick potentially. So if you want him, you can have him. Um, but as far as the need there, I understand you might be in a situation where if you're the Baltimore Ravens saying to yourselves, hey, we've had some terrible luck when it comes to injuries at the running back position. The more, the merrier. I understand that, but I think you're fine with what you have at the moment. I don't need to give up more when I get some other needs that I'd rather address personally. Well, more on Damian Pierce coming up in just a moment. Uh, and look into the specifics of what he could potentially bring to the Baltimore Ravens. Go over some numbers for you in the depth chart and all that. But first, let's ask you, should the Ravens trade for Damian Pierce? Type T for trade, P for pass. Way in the comments section. I'm typing P for pass. Let me know what you're typing in the comments section below. We're trying to reach our next milestone of 17,000 subscribers here on Ravens Rundown. We are... Uh, just less than 500 away from reaching that next mark. For the latest happenings on your Baltimore Ravens all offseason long, subscribe to the channel. If they do make a move for one of these players, like we're talking about here on today's show, we're going to bring you a video as quick as we can. Subscribe now for free, youtube.com slash Ravens TV. Stay up to date all offseason long on the channel. We got you covered. More on Damian Pierce, 2020 fourth round pick out of the University of Florida. Led the Texans in rushing as a rookie back in 2022 with 939 yards. Uh, and he's played in 27 games with 20 starts to his credit there. Uh, so he has seen the field uh, a good portion these last two seasons. But you can see how much his touches were great, greatly reduced. And, and think about this, too. The, the yards per carry went way down from 4.3 in 2022 all the way down to 2.9 this past season. Touchdown number went from seven to two. His total carries and all that. I mean, it was just a disappointing year for, for Damian Pierce this past season. I will say to his credit, he did take care of the fumbling problem. Had four of those in 2022. Did not fumble once last year. So that's a good sign. But I look at this Ravens backfield. I mean, I love Derrick Henry. I think that he's a natural fit for what the Ravens want to do in their run game. Justice Hill's not a bad backup either. Keaton Mitchell is uh, going to be back for another season. Uh, 
obviously it's going to take him a little bit of time to get healthy, but a lot of optimism about what he can bring to the table. Patrick Ricard, the best fullback in football. Rasheen Ali, you draft for Marshall. I'm very optimistic about him. There's just no need there at the running back spot. you got a very good backfield. I would argue you could make a case this might be the best running back room in the entire NFL heading into 2024. I'm fully confident in this Ravens backfield. They have the depth they need. I don't need to make a push for Damian Pierce, quite frankly. What's your confidence level in the Ravens running back room? I'm feeling pretty good. I'm going about 8.5 personally. Scale it for me, 1 through 10 in the comment section. Let us know what you think. We'll see you next time right here on Ravens Rundown. Thank you.